Hello and welcome to the program. I am Oyi Adekunle. On the heels of sustained attacks on police personnel, infrastructure and the correctional center in Oweri, the Imo state capital, and of course attacks on some communities in Ebonyi state, South East governors have come up with a possible solution to tackle criminality in the region. All five governors of Ebonyi, Imo, Abia, Enugu and Anambra met and agreed to set up the Ebubiago security outfit. Ebony State Governor and Chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum said the headquarters of the security outfit will be in Enugu State and its task will be to coordinate vigilante groups in the region. Joining me now to discuss more on this and general security issues in the Southeast is Kachi Umogwa, a public affairs analyst, and he joins us via Skype from Oweri, Imo State. Thank you very much, Mr. Umogwa, for joining us on analysis. Now, first, it was Amoteko in the Southwest, and now we have Ebubiago in the Southeast. Are we seeing a situation where every region is going to set up their own security network? We have had this, everybody to yourself, you know, go provide security for yourself. That's the meaning. The meaning means everybody should begin to think of how to organize a functional security for himself, for his state, for his region. I think that because of the weight of um, security, probably people are not trying the regional experiments. That's what is showing right now. Now, this is yet again... This is yet again a glaring evidence of the failure of a centralized domestic security system. I'm aware that every single person who has governed any state in this country, no matter which part of the country, no matter which state, has complained some very bitterly about the failure of a central security and their inability to rely on the central security to provide security for their citizens. Now, you just said this clearly shows that something is not working. But what exactly is wrong with a central policing system? Um, I mean, this is a system we have run for decades. And to a very great extent, we can say it has worked. So what exactly is not making it work again now? No, it, it, it hasn't been working it's, it's just that when something is failing, the more you stretch it, the more the failure becomes evident. Let me give you a reason, and I can tell you it, it, it has not worked. Do you, if you know the amount of unsolved crimes in this country, then you know it's never really, it, it, has, it has never been something you could go to bed with. This is 2001. Some 50 years ago, countries were solving crimes using fingerprints. 50 years ago. Today, we have BVN, which uses biometrics. We have international passports using biometrics. We have national driver's license using biometrics. We have voter's card using biometrics. We have national identity. identity using biometrics. Not one crime on record has been solved using biometrics, fingerprints. It hasn't been working. I don't agree. I'm just giving one example out of a million. Any system where an operative in Damaturu, we'll have to receive orders from somebody in Abuja that has no idea where Damaturu is, will never be a proper system. I, I quite understand the point you're trying to make. Probably technology-wise, we're not there yet in solving crimes. But let me ask you, when it comes to regional security or community policing, when it is not centralized now. Do you agree that we're still going to use the same set of personnel, human resource? So is the issue really about the central policing structure in itself or the people that make up the system? If we use the same people, even in regional policing, we're still going to get the same result anyway. So what do we think or what do you think rather is the major problem here? The system is supposed to be a check against the bad people. The system is supposed to be designed 
to be able to make it uncomfortable for the bad people and promote the good people. That's why there's a system. If there's no system, no matter how good people are, it won't work. Of course, at the end of the day, it's people that will operate the system. But you must have a proper system first. If you have the best driver in the world with a faulty car, that car ain't going to give you any service. So the first thing is to have a proper car. Then, if you put a good a driver and the driver can't work, you can be sure that, oh no, this driver is not good. I can change my driver. If you have a faulty car, you'll just be changing drivers and wasting everybody's time. Well, Mr. Moga, please, let's just take a pause here for a short break. We'll take a short break here, and when we return, we'll focus more on the Southeast security outfits that uh, the Ebu Biago. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on analysis. We've been talking about the security situation in the Southeast and the establishment of a security network by Southeast governors, that's the Ebu Biagu. And I still have with me on the program uh, Mr. Kachi Unwogwa, who is a public affairs analyst and of course he joins us from Oweri. Thank you Mr. Unwogwa for staying with us on the program. Now Ebu Biagu has been formed. Let me ask you this, in recent times the Southeast has become quite volatile. Internally, the Southeast has been, you know, we've been, we've been seeing the burning of police stations. We've seen killing of police officers, attacks and attack now on a correctional facility as well, the Oweri jailbreak and so on. Now, what do you think is responsible for this? And do you think that the establishment of Ibubiago will check this internal crisis? Because this is internal aggression we're seeing within the region itself. Why do you think the Southeast is internally volatile? Um, there are many questions you have asked rolled into one. One is in terms of how efficient will the regional security be, and the second is on the specific happenings in the southeast, you know, and how those should be addressed. I will start with the one of regional security. The reality is that the regional securities have just started. They are at their most primitive stages. They are even battling with basic things like legality, for instance. Before you go into technicalities of training of personnel, how to choose, how to function, even how to fund, knowing that these states have different budgets, for instance. So it's, those are going to be issues for a little while. Um, but because the, you're bringing the security nearer to the people, you will have some advantages in the long run. I'm not one of those who think that that is just the answer, you know, a shot in the arm, everything is all good once you do that. No, that's not true. Sometimes you even have more complications when you start. But over a period, over the long term, you're going to, because of the advantage, like I said, of having something you can control from within, you're going to um, have some good results, especially when this regional security becomes adopted into the central national security system that now gives them all they need intelligence wise and stuff like that to be able to operate i'm looking forward to when we as a country together can take that kind of collective decision and make these things to work that's one now on the other side in terms of uh, the uh, southeast the recent events are most unfortunate this is a region that has been relatively uh, peaceful compared to the rest of nigeria and it's sad that we now have to have some homegrown um, um, insecurity issues. And uh, in a way that is a bit complicated because this is now like targeting of the security apparatus. Um, weakening of the security apparatus is not good for anybody because at the end of the day, everybody's going to suffer it. So it's something I'm glad that at least there's some response coming up to it. Be that as it may. The regional security outfit, let me, put it, let me put it this way, we're in the pool. If somebody, yeah, if an, whether it is the agitation, or insurrection if you like, or the regular security forces, they are contesting from the same pool. They are contesting for human resources within the same pool. If you don't have a security outfit that can take up some of these people, 
they may end up on the side of the agitation and that worsens the matter. So from the first point of taking in able to take up from this pool, to steer the same people, to help with the security, rather than threaten the security, that already is an advantage that the regional security um, solution is offering, if you ask me. That's first of all. Second is that in any climate, in any environment, and all those who may be causing any issues are local to that environment and known to that environment. Now, the more you have people who are also local and know the environment, the more they can even tell you who is doing what. And then you can become proactive, which is the real security. So that's a second um, advantage. Again, the third one is that the citizens need confidence to be able to share the information with security. They need to be able to know that some help is on the way. Somebody can do something for them. If, if people become desperate and helpless, it can lead to more things, more, more terrible things can happen. So starting the arena security begins to give that um, confidence to the people that they have someone to run to and someone can protect them so they can actually share information and uh, not become desperate or even flee the region entirely, which has its own very, very, very negative economic um, effects. So how best do you think this security outfit can function? Should it be subsumed under the Nigerian police? Or how do you think they can be trained and empowered to carry out their functions maximally? Yeah, the, 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 we always like to borrow things from the United States. And you know, we have the federal, the FBI, you know, then you have the state police. You even have as low as university police, you know, community police. So all these work somehow together. They are recognized structures and they can work together and they go through the police training all. So they can work best. They need to go through the same police training schools, you know, because they are actually police. They need to be trained like police, equipped like police to be able to police. What nationally, we should be able to make delineations of what each can do and what each cannot do. You know, nationally, you will make sure that anything that has political implications, for instance, the, the local police should not be able to do that or get involved in political situations. Just like uh, we see in Nigeria, you get a, you transfer a policeman from, from, from uh, Benue to Sokoto, and he goes there and starts controlling traffic. You know, this is a complete, it's, it's, it looks like some bit of madness to me. So is that the value of why you have to transfer someone from Benin to Sokoto to can control traffic? You know, so these are things that are done locally and we should have federal police completely hunting off from stuff like that. And in rounding off now, Dr. Omagwa, for example, in the Southwest, there are still issues regarding the licensing of Amotekun to bear arms. Uh, I mean, how quick do you think that Ebu Biagu can now come on board with all these bottlenecks of legal backing, uh, State House of Assembly approving it and all that? How quick do you think this can uh, Like happen? I said, I told you from the beginning, they're going to have these teaching problems, the legal issues, the training issues. These are the problems we will start. But if they become national problems and we want to solve them nationally, we will solve all of them. If you say everyone to himself, then that's when we we'll have this problem. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Kachi Umogwa, public affairs analyst, uh, joining us from Oweri. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on analysis. Well, we'll take another break here, and when we return, we'll get a legal perspective to this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on analysis. Now we're getting another angle to the security situation in the Southeast and of course the establishment of uh, the Southeast security outfit, the um, Ebu Biagu. And I have joining me now on the program, Mr. Libros Oshoma, a lawyer and public affairs analyst. Mr. Oshoma, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Now let's start with your thoughts on the establishment of the Southeast security outfit. Does it look now that we're, we're tilting towards the security uh, community policing that, I mean, several people have been clamoring for. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, once again. And um, it's um, obvious now that um, those issues that we've been running away from discussing, that um, the issues are gradually, 
you know, um, enveloping us, and then it's almost certain that um, we can't avoid them. Uh, my only problem is um, this um, ad hoc arrangement with which we are addressing the issues. First it was Amoteku, and then the debates for and against, and eventually, you know, it um, was allowed to rest. And now you have um, Ebubiagu, and very soon, uh, you would have uh, some other ones from maybe the South-South, uh, and then maybe the civilian JTF that we had in um, the Northeast might um, take up uh, a new cloak. So, the one thing is certain, like I said, that um, the security situation is overwhelming, uh, it's obvious the police can't curtail it the way we had expected. And then um, it is also obvious that um, we will not run away from the issues of um, community policing or, if you want to call it, regional policing, state policing, or anything you want to call it. But it is good. Uh, that's why we need you know, to actually sit down and look at it holistically, tailor it in the way that it will um, suit each um, the peculiarity of um, the region and not this ad hoc arrangement that you're having because um, if not properly tailored and not properly, you know, taken care of, it might just collapse like uh, it started. I mean, I'm glad you spoke about the back and forth and all the debates that happened when Amotekun was set up. We had issues with uh, the state's um, houses of assembly now coming to back the security outfit. So now setting the stage for Ebu Beagu, what kind of groundwork would you expect the state governors that make up that region to put in place? As you just said, you're, you're against all the ad hoc arrangements. So putting it right now, like getting it right from the get-go, what kind of arrangements would you expect the governors to put in place? Yeah, um, I would not want a situation where um, you have a motekun that are just meant to carry, you know, baton, and then um, the, those that they are to fight against are well armed with the AK-47s and the rest. So the first thing that um, the state governors should do now is to sit down, let the Attorney General sit down with um, the Federal Attorney General and then, um, you know, carve out the law that will boldly and um, courageously empower them to bear arms. And then also um, areas of jurisdiction where there are conflicts, what um, the police should do and what um, the Bibiagu should do so that there won't be clashes, there won't be conflict. Uh, the powers of arrest, um, the powers of prosecution, the powers of investigation, you know, uh, there should be clearly defined lines and areas of jurisdiction. I so mean, that the, sorry to cut you here, the, the chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum did say that it will be intelligence-based and they'll be monitoring vigilante activities in the region. What do you make of that? That's why I want it clearly defined, because uh, this intelligence base, this is not the first time we're gathering intelligence. And um, a situation where you gather intelligence and there have been accusations that um, the federal government security agencies, you know, do not do anything with such intelligence. What will the um, Megubiagu or the local security outfit do in the circumstance? Do they have powers to, in the absence of failure, to act on their intelligence? Do they have powers to do anything, you know, or just watch? when um, this security is visited on them. That's why I said the first thing to do, it's, it's, talk is cheap, talk is very easy. You can have laudable ideas, fantastic ideas, and then if it is not properly tailored and clearly defined, you're going to run into murky waters when you start execution. And so, you can gather intelligence, and then when it comes to execution, how do you now execute those intelligence ideas when those people who are supposed to work with those ideas refuse to work with them? If you remember, intelligence had never really been the problem of the state governors gathering intelligence, but the problem had been that um, you know the federal agencies refused to use those such intelligence. And so, the first thing is, in in the circumstances, what will the law prescribe? The law should prescribe what should happen when such things happen. And in areas of conflict, the law also should be able to. Pre presume all of those areas and clear the doubts. Uh, um, policing, like I've always said, insecurity is local. Policing needs to be local. Mm -hmm. And in, in ensuring that um, you have local policing, let's be sure that we do not have con conflict. I, I, I like these ideas, but I would not want a situation where, like I said, it just props up and then to address the heat of the moment, and in the long run, it fizzles out and dies away, just like uh, the Nigerian thing, if you understand what I mean. Mm. Now, very quickly, now, I just want to get your opinion. Are you for or uh, against these regional outfits or those in the regional outfit bearing arms? Because yes, it, I said it. I'm, I'm, for, I'm for regional outfits 
even bearing arms, because since you don't expect a man to use baton for, to fight uh, people who are, are carrying arms, I believe they should bear arms. But in bearing arms, arms on its own, you know, have a spirit behind it. Exactly. And so they should be properly trained to bear these arms. And then clearly define on what circumstances must you bear arms. And if these arms are abused, how will um, uh, uh, disciplinary actions and enforcement of uh, uh, violations you know, be carried out. And that's why I said it shouldn't be an ad hoc base. It should be a long-term thing, properly planned and thought out. Uh, and I agree, like I said, security is local, and there is no way you can, you can bring a man from Arugungu to police a, uh, mm -hmm. a movie in Aruchuku and expect that he will do proper policing without actually carrying the locals along. But in carrying the locals along also, ensure that the locals do not abuse, you know, these privileges. And that's what basically I'm saying. And lastly now, how soon do you see Abubiago hitting uh, the ground? And of course, uh, what going forward, do you think that it will live up to expectations? Because looking at the kind of security or the attacks we've seen in the southeast now, which has been relatively peaceful, if you, if you agree with me. Now, how soon do you see things coming to an end, like insecurity coming to an end? Or, I mean coming to a point where we can sleep with two eyes closed in the southeast. Even in the southwest where you have a Motekun, it's still work in progress. And so for the southeast, as a student of a strategic planning, I believe in what you call short-term measures, medium-term measures, and long-term measures. So the short-term measures should start with intelligence gathering and the collaborations with the national security agencies. Um, and then medium-term measures, how do you, you know, uh, ensure that there are no conflicts and in the event of conflict and abuses how do you you know reconcile and enforce you know measures to to foster reoccurrence and then the long-term measures should now take us to areas where would time where we would sleep with our both eyes closed where you would you know be be proactive rather than being reactive uh, and so it's it's it shouldn't be a hundred meter dash but a marathon and then um, uh, being a marathon, I don't want the governors to see it, you know, beginning and ending with their tenures. It should be a continuum. Mm. And that's why the, government sh the governors should carry everybody along and um, ensure that um, every well-meaning person from the southeast, you know, is also in tandem with these laudable ideas that they have come up with. Well, Mr. Libra Sashoma, we thank you very much for sharing your insights with us on this very important matter. Always thank you very pleasure. much for your time. Always my pleasure. Well, with that, we'll call it a wrap on this episode of the program. Well, thank you for watching. I am Oni Adekunle. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.